Hello, so it's almost two in the morning on May 3rd, but I decided I needed to start another vlog to talk about Ruthless Gods. Because I just finished, this is it without the dust jacket. Look at all my tabs. Let me put the dust jacket back on. So this was crazy, insane, literally made me scream, oh my God, out loud to myself even though no one is around me, no one can hear me. But yet I still screamed it because it's just like a very cerebral book is the way I would describe it. Like it's kind of weird and cerebral cosmic horror type stuff, but like it's so good and so twisted and I absolutely love it. Like the writing is just, it's just really well done, really well executed and I'm so intrigued to see how this is going to wrap up because things just got way more intense like the knowledge of how the gods and everything works just got so much deeper in this book definitely did not suffer from middle book syndrome because literally like I think this might have been even better than the first one like I just brought it up another level and I'm so so excited like this honestly is like definitely a series i could see myself rereading in the future once all the books are out and like trying to pick up clues and like i don't know i just really really enjoyed this one so i'm really happy that i read it and i'm gonna have to type up a review and whatnot but yeah i, I did kind of read it slow like um i kind of took a maybe i filmed the last clip for my last reading vlog maybe like a week and a half ago and then i just haven't really felt like vlogging because i've been um not reading like super fast and like you know just pandemic things <laughs> uh sometimes when you're like thrown off of your routine like you can maybe do some things less like i thought i'd be reading a lot a lot during the pandemic but i don't think my reading levels have really changed that much but it's more so that it goes through spurts where i like to read and then other times i'm like not reading as much i know it's weird but like I feel motivated to read and so I have about 20 more minutes until this thing that I'm watching at 2 a.m. comes on. So I'm going to continue with The Betrothed which I put down to do the reading rush, stay at home reading rush and never pick back up. I'm about halfway through. It's definitely like very um it's just written with like a younger a younger style I guess so like they'll be for a little bit of the younger side of YA. Very light and fluffy easy to fly through so I'm gonna hopefully finish this and then I want to read The Jewel Thief next because I have an arc of that and Keely just read it and I wasn't like so sure if I was gonna pick it up or not but then she said that it was really really good and so I figured I'd pick it up. You know it's May, May 3rd and I'm just disregarding my TBR but that's how it happens but if it's something that i'm really drawn into i could probably finish it pretty quickly and also my tbr is only four books long with two mangas so it leaves me a lot of space to work with so with that being said i'm gonna just read as much as of this as i can and then stop for the evening and then get back to it tomorrow hopefully i do some more reading tomorrow and from there we shall see I think I'm also going to buy another bookshelf even though there's not really space in my apartment there's even less space for all the things that are piling up so I think I might just buy like a cheap bookshelf that like just for now until we get a bigger apartment because we are looking to move later in the year so um that's it for now but I'm kind of excited to be starting a reading vlog again because I feel myself back into the reading zone especially with how freaking good this book is so yes that's all for now Sunday, May 3rd, but later on in the day, 
it's almost 8 p.m. and I went out on a walk today, which is very nice. I needed to be in the sunshine for a little bit. And now I am just working on finishing the betrothed and just kind of reading this in between doing other stuff. I have about 75 pages left and I just need it to end. It's really boring and nothing is really happening and the relationships like just don't seem fleshed out at all. Like the interactions between the characters for her to be like considering not being queen just like i feel like it's not justified like it, like they talk twice and she's like ready to throw out her crown i don't know it's not the juicy historical romance that i wanted it to be it's very surface level and i'm definitely disappointed in this book but now i'm like so close to the end i just want to see it through see how it finishes so i'm probably gonna just like read through it really quickly and then make dinner and then start a different book so i just finished the betrothed this book sucked i gave it one star it was awful like there was just the characters had no personalities i don't know what happened with the plot and like the twist ending was just out of nowhere and the whole thing was just like, there was just no sense of resolution at the end. And I'm just like, it's just bad. It's just bad. It's just bad. I just needed to come on here and express my feelings that this is just really bad. And I feel like I kind of wasted my time reading it, but it's over now. So I don't even think about it anymore. And with that being said, I'm going to pick up the Jewel Thief and to reassure myself that it's good i read like a page and the writing style already seems like it's up to my caliber so i'm excited to read it also my friend Kelly just read it she said she loved it so hopefully it's a better time <laughs> hello so it's early morning may 7th i think i don't even know the day anymore and i'm here to talk about this hidden gem of a book called the jewel thief by jenny mobley and i picked up this arc at ala back in January and I also got an extra copy and gave it to my friend Keely. So Keely just read it and she's like, this book is amazing, you need to read it. And this wasn't one that I was going to initially reach for, but because she gave it such rave reviews, I was like, all right, I'll read it. And I'm now halfway through, I'm on page 180 and there's that like 350 pages in this book and it is amazing. It is about this girl whose father works for the King of France and is tasked to cut the biggest diamond, um, otherwise known as what is today, the Hope Diamond. Back then it was known as like the Violet and it's basically like this impossible task. And in the beginning of the story, you find out that she's arrested and the man that is to take her testimony to figure out whether or not the king will pardon her is her former lover, Renee. he's like the clerk. And so what's really unique about the story is the writing and it's the fact that she is telling the story to renee so it does use like first person and it also not really like second person but it's it, it is told like she's telling the story to him so she will like say you as though she's telling the story to someone but it's really immersive and we get kind of this back and forth between them because he feels obviously very betrayed by her and we kind of learn why as we go through the story and it's just really interesting um to learn about this book set in france in that time period and especially with like the king and the intrigue of the jewels it's just very very well written and we see juliette's character kind of like as she's trying to save her family and kind of like her follies and especially with this back and forth between her lover that she has like he will point out her flaws and kind of like almost brings himself realization to her so we see her character journey i just think it's done really well and this is as i said a hidden gem of a book haha <laughs> get my pun because it's not something that i would normally reach for or i haven't really seen many people talking about it it does come out on may 26th from viking publishing so yeah i mean if you see this please pick it up because i'm really enjoying it so far i don't see a lot of historical fiction ya I think that YA tends to go more towards like the fantasy and historical fictions don't necessarily get a lot of traction in YA. Um, there are a few like Rupta, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but like um, 
fountains of silence and i know like the lovely war like those those few so maybe it is picking up a little bit more traction now but i do see historical fiction being a bigger you know thing in the adult genre especially because it tends to be about like wartime it can be like very heavy so this is it's fun but it is not like fantasy in any way so i'm really enjoying it so far and i will continue to update you on my thoughts about it but yeah it's fun and then i was just facetiming maddie because she's reading stranger dreamer and she had questions for me so then we were reading on facetime together for a while so that was fun and yeah i just am enjoying this and i'm glad that i listened to keely and picked it up because keely's always right go subscribe to keely's channel if you are not subscribed she's my bff we met through booktube and her child name is Sincerely at Keely Joe, which I helped her come up with the name that she just changed it to. So give it a follow and a subscribe. And yeah, that's going to be it for now. I'm going to go and see you in the next clip. Hello. So it's Friday, May 8th, and I didn't read any more last night because I just got tired and went to bed. But today I wanted to do a little birthday haul because it's been about a week ish two weeks since my birthday and i did get some lovely presents and i wanted to talk about them and these are just going to be bookish ones i got a whole bunch of k-pop albums for my birthday but i posted a k-pop album haul on my k-pop channel if you are so inclined but yeah i won't be talking about that too much here but yeah at the start off, i did get a barnes and noble gift card from my boyfriend's parents so thanks a lot i will be putting this to good use <laughs> um from my friend keely i got volume four of yona of the dawn which is a manga series that i've been slowly making my way through and i absolutely love it so thank you so much keely and i kind of lost track of where a lot of these notes went so although i'm trying to keep them all together so that i can maybe like do a journal spread with them or something i think that'd be really fun so this one okay so the one that came with yona says yo 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 shawty it's your birthday this is kind of becoming a tradition now so here's more yona love you from keely joe <laughs> she was so like formal and then like not formal it's funny okay so yes thank you keely i will be hopefully getting to this in may and then from chanel she got me two books because she spoils me and she got me happiness volume one which is a manga about vampires and i'm so so excited to read this because i've heard nothing but great things and there's only 10 volumes in the manga so i feel like it's like pretty short for like a lot of mangas have like 20 something books which is what i'm getting myself into at the end of the dawn but yeah so i am really excited and i'm really thankful that she got this for me because i've been really having my eye on it and i do kind of want to read it like immediately because i'm just that intrigued by it and she also got me children of virtue and vengeance because she's a beautiful soul and okay here are the notes that she got me so it says katie happy birthday my wonderful friend i wanted you to have this because you make me happy i adore you and hope your day of birth will be spent with lots of love and joy even with the world's current status i love you and then her next note it says another b-day gift love you hope they arrive and just like amazing my heart is warm thank you so oh goodness my camera just fell. okay thank you so much chanel i love you i adore you thank you for being my friend because you are an amazing friend okay and then next i got a k-pop album from cynthia from chronicles of a bookworm but she also got me a graceling by kristen cashore which is like one of those classic ya books that i've always wanted to read and heard nothing but great things about and for her note she said dear katie happy birthday i'm sorry this will get to you a little late but i hope you enjoy i'm so grateful to know you and be able to bond together over bts and books love you from cynthia and i talked about the album that she got me on my album haul but yeah thank you so much cynthia you are the best and then the next gift is Courting Darkness by Robin Lefevers, and this is from Jasmine at L'Amour de Books and it says happy belated birthday Katie thank you for always making the best content and just being such a sweet person I love meeting you at BookCon last year and hopefully we can meet again enjoy your gift thank you so much Jasmine I hope that BookCon 2021 will occur because I would love to see everyone again and yeah I'm just th really thankful for this gift and the last book that I have here is that 
my best friend from childhood and just like best friend in general melissa got me the game of thrones collector's edition which i've had on my wish list forever and i never thought i would actually get but these editions are just absolutely breathtaking with such beautiful art and so i'm so thankful to add it to my game of thrones collection because it's just really really cool and it's just like an awesome edition so yeah thank you so much melissa i love you forever and ever and then the last little thing I wanted to say is I got this card from my friend Court and she said, Happy birthday, Katie. I'm so, so glad we started chatting. You're so sweet, funny, clever, precious, and amazing. Chatting with you always brightens my day and I love screaming about our faves. I will literally help you get into any group, lol. I hope you have a musical birthday full of sunshine and happiness. And then she makes these little custom photo cards. So she made me a bunch of them for all of the groups that I love and also for all the groups that I told her I wanted to start to learn. She made little guides for me, which is awesome. So thank you so much, Court. I just love these little homemade presents. And she also made me a playlist, which I love playlists. So this means a lot to me. Thank you very much. And yeah, of course, I had a very wonderful day. Thank you to everyone that reached out to me to wish me happy birthday. It's not about the presents, even though I, I, maybe I made it about the presents by talking about the presents, but it's really about those, like the love that I got from people. And I really appreciate it, especially people going out of their way to, you know, make the day happy for me, even though we're all in really tough times right now because it's a uh, quarantine. And then I just have one last thing to open, and this is a package that I got from Macmillan. So let's see what is inside. Oh, oh, okay, this got to me so quick. I got an arc of The Faithless Hawk by Margaret Owen, which is a sequel to The, Merciful, the Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. So I got a arc for this at BookCon last year and I've since passed it on and I have a finished copy over here and I it was one of the surprises of the year and I feel like this is one of the books that like I read the arc of and then people started reading the finished copy and didn't like it but I really loved it and I know Maddie really loved it as well and so hopefully maybe we will buddy read this before it comes out in July but yeah I'm just really really excited for this I'm not sure if this is a duology or not yeah thank you so much to henry holt and company for sending this my way because i am so excited and i'm uh, it seems like a lot of arcs are now just being um printed as net galley arcs like they're only doing digital arcs not physical arcs but i know that these started printing a while ago which is probably why they still have them um so i'm thankful i was able to get this copy and for, for fantasy books, like I will sometimes do digital arcs, but not always. I'm more likely to read it if it is a physical arc. So a lot of the books that I was maybe going to request arcs for that are just digital arcs, I would rather um, just wait for the finished copy. Like I was going to request the sequel of There Will Come a Darkness as an arc, but since I know that I love that series and I'm going to want to annotate that book, I'll just wait for a finished copy so that I don't have to like try and juggle annotations between a Kindle or anything like that. Um, same for Blood and Honey, which is going to be the sequel of Serpent and Dove, which is another one that BookTube didn't seem to like, but I really loved. <laughs> so yeah, that is my clip for today. I do plan on reading some more tonight because I slept for so long last night. I will probably be up late. Uh, maybe I can finish The Jewel Thief. And um, and then if I finish do finish The Jewel Thief, I'm going to start Happiness, which this is a manga, so I can definitely read it in like a day. Um, or I might read this first and then get to work on finishing The Jewel Thief. But I do want to say, reading this book led me down a spiral of strange Googlings. Because I, well, it's about like a jewel cutter's daughter. So it talks a lot about like the process of cutting the jewel. And so I was reading all about like the different cuts of diamonds and like how the brilliant cut, which is like the most common diamond cut that we see today, was invented. Because obviously like today they use like lasers and stuff to get all the angles, but they didn't have that back in the day so i was googling that and then in this there's like one paragraph talked about rouging nipples and i was just so confused because i'm like why would you put like blush on your nipple but it turns out in 17th century france or is this yeah 17th century france like the dresses were just cut really low and the corsets were high so like it was seen as a high society thing like your boob just fell out of your dress which i didn't know about so yeah, it led to some very, very interesting 
little random tidbits that I know and that's how I know a lot of random facts is because things will pop up in books and then I'll Google them and then I know useless information. So yeah, that's it for now. Hello, so it's, God, what day is it? <laughs> Um, it's Wednesday, May 13th, and it's like almost 2 a.m., so it's really like of the day of Tuesday, <laughs> May 12th. Um, and I lost track of time, so I didn't get to read tonight, but I do want to say that I finished The Jewel Thief by Jenny Mobley, and I absolutely adored it. I gave it five stars. I just thought it was so well written, and I really, really enjoyed this historical romance. I haven't read a lot of YA historical fiction, so it's kind of cool to see it becoming more popular because usually like I think I mentioned this before that historical fiction for the most part that I've seen is um adult so I kind of like the YA aspect of it but I just thought that the way that it was written kind of like as a confessional of Juliet to her paramour <laughs> really really well and it just lent to a really cool writing style and a very emotional confession I I just I don't know I just loved it I loved it I thought it was a gem of a book. With that being said, I did read a manga last night. I read Happiness by Shuzo Oshimi and this is volume one and it's about basically this high school boy that gets turned into a vampire and it's a horror manga. I think it's considered a horror manga. I really just enjoyed it because I thought that it is kind of just like the beginning of the journey and I think there's 10 volumes total but I thought that the way that like it was drawn is really awesome. Like we have this shot and also um, when he's kind of like starting to thirst for blood, the illustrations get like very wonky and like distorted. This, so yeah, I hope I can pick up the rest of the series soon because I am into the <laughs> vampire thing. And then I've decided the next book I'm going to be starting is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. It's finally time to start this one. I've had it on my shelf forever. It's been staring at me and like I'm definitely in the mood for a sci-fi after having read more fantasies and historical novels lately. So this will be what I'm starting next and hopefully I'll start it tomorrow. I also have a bookshelf to build so that's nice but that's going to be not in this vlog but its own separate video. So keep an eye out for that. I'm not sure which order they'll come out in. If it's already out, I will link it up above. And if not, um, look forward to it in the future. But yep, I'm gonna peace out for the night now. Friday, May something, 15th already? Wow. I just wanted to say that I'm reading Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and the past two days I've gone to the park and sat down under a tree and read. I don't have an outdoor space in this apartment so like forcing myself to walk all the way to the park and sitting down and reading has just been really relaxing for me. I love being in the outdoors and I've definitely been like way too cooped up in this quarantine and just in general I feel like since I've moved here since like have to walk the outdoor space i haven't done it so i'm really gonna try and motivate myself to like spend more time in the outdoors so i'm on page 127 can i just say i love spensa with my everything because she is five basically around five feet my height so she's super short and she's sassy and like she literally okay this one quote just sent me reeling it's my favorite thing ever it was annoying to have to look up at him. I leaped onto my seat to gain a height advantage for the argument, an action that seemed to surprise him. He cocked his head. What? Always attack from a position of superior advantage, I said. When this is done, jerk face, I will hold your tarnished and melted pin up as my trophy as your smoldering ship marks your pyre and the final resting place of your crushed and broken corpse. <laughs> so she is my icon forever. This 
it's just really immersive sci-fi like i think that this would be a good sci-fi book maybe for people that don't read too much sci-fi just because brandon sanderson is so immersive and he is mostly a fantasy writer so his style of writing sci-fi doesn't vary too much from fantasy from fantasy but it's just like the way he describes the world and everything and the different devices that they have and flying a starship is just so awesome i'm really really enjoying it and hopefully i will continue to read this book and just absolutely love it like i already want to order the second book on amazon and have it arrive so i can read it but yeah i just I'm really really happy with my choice to pick this one up and like i've had it on my shelf forever and never picked it up despite knowing that i would absolutely love it and devour it so <sighs> story of my life also here is my shelf back here i just filmed my building my bookshelf video and i'm gonna go back to filming either like later tonight or tomorrow to put stuff on there but i'm really happy with how it came out despite having some <laughs> difficulties building it in the beginning i worked it out it's all fine so See you guys in the next clip. Another day and I'm at another park and this tree is honestly a little bit more comfortable than the other one. I'm trying to blend in with the Boston locals here with my Red Sox cap. And I'm going to be continuing to read Skyward, hopefully since it's Saturday and we'll be spending more time at the park. I'll get more reading done, but I'm currently on page 127. Really loving it so far. It's honestly perfect. Sci-fi, everything that I want in sci-fi. I'll get more thoughts like when I'm home. Uh, yeah, but for now. There's Alex playing golf and Hi. there's a puppy over there so I just love sitting by trees and reading. Hello so it's late Saturday night and I have been reading Skyward some more. I didn't last too long in the park because honestly it got really cold once we were there so we just headed back and I've <sighs> been reading all night i'm like sucked into this book it's so good it's just like so immersive and like trying to learn about why these people are under attack by this alien species and like how they ended up on this planet like it's just very well thought out and very intricate and i just love spensa because she's so fiery and there's definitely more under the surface of what's going on with the government so that's always fun so i'm on page 289 um there's a sassy ai known as mbot and like he's my fave forever love him i love i love how he's always like yeah you know if i had a personality but i'm just an ai and like i just personally find that really funny um so definitely bring some comic relief there's also an animal in here known as doom slug and there's just like some slug that can make noises and she's my favorite so yeah it's also just like the system of the ships and everything and like the way that they work is obviously very well researched so i'm really enjoying that aspect because it just sounds very like realistic to flight maneuvers and stuff like that and i'm sure brandon sanderson did a lot of research into that before writing this book but let me just show you that we have like schematics of what the things look like for before each part so i'll just show you the ones that i've seen so far so we have before part two these and then for part three, we have these ones. So this is like the alien ship, and it literally looks like a jellyfish. And then before part four, we have this. So yeah, it's really cool. I love, oh, hello. I love having those diagrams because it just like gives a lot of context to the story and just shows how well researched it is. So it's amazing. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to watch the NCT 127 concert with Maddie and have a good time with that. And that's on from 2 to 4 a.m., but I'll do anything for my K-pop boys. So that is all, and hopefully tomorrow I'll have a relaxing day of doing some productive things and reading my book. Hello, so it's Monday, May 18th, and I'm just going to close out the vlog here. I did want to mention before I go that I did get two more birthday presents that I just didn't have near me when I was doing the haul before, and I got All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace from Austin, so thank you so much, Austin, and I got Monstrous Volume 4 from T, so thank you, T. Um, I just, it's, it's right here. I just am too lazy to pull it out because it's, like, really tight in there. <laughs> um... So thank you guys for making my birthday great i think over the course of this vlog i read the betrothed which i gave one star i didn't think it was good at all i read the jewel thief which i gave five stars i thought it was wonderful and those are examples of historical fictions that were literally on opposite ends of the spectrum for me 
I read Happiness Volume 1. Did I even talk about that? I don't know what I talked about. I read Happiness Volume 1. It's a, uh, like a horror manga. Really love that. And then I have been reading Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, and I'm on page 399. So I have about 100 pages left, and I am absolutely loving this one. I'm probably going to finish it tonight, and or maybe tomorrow, because I have to edit tonight for this vlog to go tomorrow. And I'm loving it. I just think it's so well done. I love unraveling the mysteries and also learning about Spencer and like as she goes on this immersion emotional journey as she becomes a pilot and it's not like just fighting, like it's uh kind of been glorified. I just think it's a really, really well done sci-fi and it just makes me want to read more Brandon Sanderson and more sci-fi in general. I also think this is a good sci-fi for people that want to get into sci-fi and are used to reading fantasy because he is a fantasy writer. So I find that the style of writing is pretty similar to fantasy, um, but just instead of a fantasy world, it's a sci-fi world. So yeah, really cool. I also love the amount of detail that is put into the flying, even though it's its own kind of like system of flight. It's very detailed, like it's the spaceships and stuff don't work like the technology would work in our own world, but yet it still physically makes sense. So I really appreciate that Brandon Sanderson has put in their time and the research to do like the physics behind it. Yeah, it's just really smart. I'm really enjoying it. I uh, also today uh, cleaned all my bookshelves up, so I just feel like so much more free. I have some arcs that I'm going to pass along to people, and it just feels good to kind of only be keeping the books that are, you know, something that I want to reread and like curating my collection because I do have very limited space. So, with that being said, I'm going to close out the vlog and have some fun reading the books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.